Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hindu Explainer series. I am Kushagra Goyal and very warm greetings from Top Rep Tutorial. So yesterday we had some technical problems and even though I had done the recording of May 25 and had sent it to the office, it couldn't be uploaded. You, before you see this recording of May 26, you will see on our YouTube channel the May 25th video also. And today itself in a gap of an hour each, we will also upload the videos of the days that we have missed in the past week. So you'll be seeing all of that. So therefore, we'll be getting straight into the newspaper analysis and doubts about all those videos I will collectively take on May 27. Okay, so that is my promise. I will not miss any of your doubts. All right. So on that note, as I record this, the landfall of Cyclone Yas has taken place and it has taken note as a very severe cyclonic storm with wind speeds at the maximum of 165 kilometers per hour. So the category of the cyclone and the place where it makes landfall, which is North Odisha and South Bengal is where it has made its landfall. All right. Then on national news on person in news section okay is the confirmation that we finally have a new cbi director a position that has been vacant for the past six uh since february onwards the past couple five six months the position has been vacant and subodh kumar an ips officer of 1985 batch has been confirmed as the new cbi director and there are Regarding CBI director's position, there are a couple of things that need to be noted down. First, the panel that elects or selects the CBI director. So in that panel, there is the prime minister, there is the leader of opposition of, in Lok Sabha and the chief justice of India. Recently, petitions have been filed in the Supreme Court to make the same panel responsible to appoint election commissioners also. Of late, there have been doubts about impartiality of election commissioners also so the same panel has been put in on this regard of cbi director there is certain stories along with it which also need to be noted down so the chief justice of india that is nv ramna had pointed out that see certain candidates that were forwarded by the government should not be appointed precisely for one reason that in 2019 the supreme court had come up with a judgment that see officers that have less than six months in office should not be appointed as cbi directors as part of convention two of the senior most batches that are in service in ips are the ones who are taken into consideration in that officers are shortlisted but the CGI has pointed out that there is no point appointing a person who has less than six months in office as the purpose of selection of a candidate is not merely to discharge basic functions. Any officer who is an IPS can, is capable of doing that. The purpose is those officers who can ensure that the agency remains free from control of the government or can ensure independence of the agency that they had cbi as you know has always been seen as an extension of the delhi police and a national police force for the central government famously in 2013 supreme court had pointed out that cbi is like a parrot in a cage the cage owned by the central government so that on that note cbi's independence has always been in question by different corners of the political spectrum in that regard only this new panel was created to have at least have the appointment of director to be independent of government control the independence of the agency therefore flows from those who head the organization so that is the news then moving on on the front page there is also news about the new IT rules come into force today. What are these new IT rules? The guidelines for intermediaries and digital media ethics rules. Now, these IT rules we had discussed in the month of February extensively. There are two major things about this. So social media companies are intermediaries, all right, that they host the content of their users. However, the new rules make these companies liable 
and specially there is another clause which has now been challenged in the supreme court is of tracing the individual of problematic message so we know that a lot of fake news gets circulated on whatsapp which has been given a famous name as whatsapp university right so in that regard how do you trace who has was the first person who started such fake news so in that regard the rules call for finding or tracing of the first originator however whatsapp has claimed that see this would be the end of privacy that the moment you can look for the one who has originated to do that you have to look at all messages of everyone and precisely there ends the privacy of the users because till now whatsapp conversations are end to end encrypted unless the user themselves provide for encryption code which would be being a witness in your own case and secondly it would be a violation of the fundamental right to privacy under article 21 so on those grounds these rules have been challenged it needs to be seen how they work and news have come from uttar pradesh we have seen images of you can see in this pictures also thousands and thousands of bodies who have been buried on the banks of river ganga and now the shrouds or covering from them are being removed to cover up the administration says this is part of cleaning exercise because media this looks bad in general the purpose is that see this couldn't be seen as a cover up all right so that is part of covid 19 for us not that much relevant then th- i have highlighted this news dot doctors prescription take rest eat well and watch out for fatigue not because it is important from clad perspective but it is because it is generally important for all of you to read this so that you can advise everyone who has recovered from covid 19 and if any one of you as users have also contracted the disease that you should take adequate rest eat well and watch out for long term symptoms covid 19 is supposed to have long term implications on our health for years to come so therefore make sure that you are taking care doctors have warned that you could suffer from lung fibrosis or even lead to readmission in hospital and heightened heart attack risk if you don't take proper care so make sure that those around you also do it all right then moving on the editorial section talks about something very important today so the main editorial is definitely one that should be given a read prior to that another person in news related news mb rajesh has become the 15th kerala assembly speaker so members of the house elect the speaker and in that regard he has been nominated as the speaker of the house so on the editorial front before i come to the main editorial on the left hand side calibrated closures that with no short road to universal vaccination lockdown should be precise and painless this is talking about that see we need to vaccinate people at a earlier pace we need to do it fast because as covid 19 spreads it mutates we already know that a modified version that is b1617.2 is 50% more transmissible than b1617 and it can lead to higher mortality also so we need to have quick vaccination and not over the time of one year then the next one which is rules and rulers the government must hear out social media industry and shed its arbitrary rule making no social media company or stakeholders social media is what the users constitute the largest constituent of social media right the users were never considered or consulted in making these rules democracy's purpose is consultancy so therefore the editorial points out that see now that the rules have been put in there are concerns related to the rules and the social media industry should be considered because they will be the one who have been put into first command to regulate their platforms and how it affects them so therefore this becomes important to be seen how this will be done and the government should shed its high handedness and com- consult the people because as democracy it is their responsibility then the second editorial here showing slowing the pace of india's mucocorticoids threat so this is related to how and what can be done to slow down the 
threat of black fungus. This is scientific policy, so not so relevant for us. The main editorial is what is more relevant for us. What is this about? It is talking about the Israel-Palestine dispute. It questions the solution of the two states solution that is being pointed out. For years, ever since in 19th century, the Zionism movement started. Zionism movement was what? Asking all the Jews across the world to take back the land of around the state of Palestine, that the city of Jerusalem was originally part of their religion. The Jews had decided to migrate to different locations for better opportunities. And therefore, the Zionism movement was to reclaim that land. And in that regard, ever since then, they have been outstripping those who have been living on that land. If we, for a moment, stop looking at the movement as reclaiming the land from past, it seems very similar to the movement of colonialism. This is what the author is trying to tell us. What is colonialism? So colonialism basically was the idea where countries who are more powerful will take over the land there, remove the people who are there, or make those who are living in that land subservient to them. So United States as a country of white people started out by mass killing of red Indians, taking away their land and putting them impoverished, leaving to on the continent in 16th, 17th century, where the entire continent was populated by red Indians, today they constitute a mere 1.8% of the population. Similarly is the case of Australia also, where Europeans created Australia as a prison for people to put them away. And therefore, that led to further killing of aborigines population in Australia. In India and other Asian countries which suffered from colonialism, the intention was same, that you maximize the resources that are there, make these people subservient to us and make them serve us, right? So the British started as traders and then started slowly, slowly taking away the entire land in 200 years, right? So that was colonialism. Israel or the movement of Zionism is exactly this. Something that, see, the land was Palestinian land. They had been living there peacefully for centuries, right? Almost 2000 years they were living there until 19th century when the first settlers started coming in. So because the country was a British colony, the British accepted the Jews because they were a powerful community. As they came into their lands, they started evicting those who had been living in the neighbor. So let's say you welcome a tenant in your house and then the tenant throws out the landlord, right? This is exactly what the situation has become that today, 80% of the land that was historically Palestine is now controlled by the Jews and the Palestinians on the land where they were in majority have now been reduced to serve the people of Israel. They are not given equal citizenship rights. They are treated exactly the way the apartheid regime in South Africa treated the black population. The whites came, started living there, established businesses there and made the entire country subservient to them. The movement or the day when it all started is known as Nakba or the catastrophe which Palestinians call in 1948. So, United States, uh, United Nations, in once it was created, thought that, see, we can create two independent states and this will lead to these two states living in harmony. However, we know that this is the same solution the British pointed out for India and Pakistan, that let's partition these people and then they will live peacefully. They gave in to the demands of Muhammad Ali Jinnah that, see, you get the land of Muslim majority, basically commun communal idea that Muhammad Ali Jinnah had and they supported that idea. Have India and Pakistan lived in peace since then? No, right? We have fought three wars. Something similar happened in 1947 to 1948. So the, mo the day 
in 1947 this was created and legitimized the case of jews who had come to the land as a separate state within a year within a year 80% of the land was taken away from palestinians and they were evicted almost half of the palestinian population was killed by the israelis in 1948 and the other people were made refugees in west bank and gaza strip ever since then by from 1948 to 1967 then began the other movement in 1967 israel occupied the rest of the territory also that rest of the 20% also since then slowly and slowly israel has been evicting these palestinians from that land and the latest fire was of sheikh jarrah region or east jerusalem so israel wants and believes that the entire city of jerusalem should belong to israel and the west part of the city already has jewish majority now is the process of making the eastern side of the capital also part of israel in that regard was the steps to evict palestinians from the sheikh jarrah region right so this is the story that it points out and it then states that see ever since then israel has been slowly slowly working to evict palestinians from the rest of the territory also the gaza strip people rose in arms against those uh, israeli settlers and therefore israel decided not to occupy that land however they had made this entire strip of land that is gaza strip a open prison people cannot move in resources cannot move in the second part is the west bank and slowly so west bank as per oslo accords oslo accords were the measure of peace by western countries to have peace in israel palestine after the first intifada which was the first uprising of palestinians since then the oslo accords divided west bank into three areas a b and c exactly the same way india was divided a territory for territories majority by hindus b created as territories majority by the muslims and c princely states and we already know that sardar patel played a pioneer role in uniting india with the a and c region however because the british supported the claim of mohammad ali jinnah india had to be partitioned right so this is the process that israel has been undergoing since then that the territories or what is known as the bantu tenization of the west bank area israel has been slowly slowly taking away the territories from west bank area also how are they doing it so under oslo accords a palestinian authority was created the powers that this palestinian authority has or the plo has are defined by the israeli government itself so it has no real power actually so therefore the author then concludes by saying that see colonial systems have not worked previously also we know how it ended for red indians we already know how it ended for aborigines in australia israel situation is going to be the same unless we create one united state where israelis and palestinians equal that we have to look for a solution similar to south africa where you claim that whites and blacks are equal stakeholder in the country until then this will keep on happening and palestinians will completely be removed because zionism as a idea on which israel is established does not believe in arabs being equal so this is the idea that the author proposes which is in conflict to the two state solution and puts the reality of two state solution into perspective so do give this a read this is the other side of the story of the palestinian conflict then moving on on the oped page so vaccinization is our only weapon this calls that see india cannot wait for next 5 6 months to vaccinate we have to vaccinate the entire population over the time period of 2 months because 
delaying the process of vaccination is only going to make everyone at risk. We already know as the virus mutates, the already existing vaccines that we have received are becoming weaker in efficacy. Then moving on, still grappling with online classes. This is part of how state universities should be given funding if education is to continue online. And then the pandemic cartoon shows that the pandemic is a fire and the fuel prices which are rising consistently for the past 13 days is or making or is giving adding fuel to the fire. Then the data point talks about the map of how different countries have vaccinated percentage of their population with the Western countries having vast disparity in comparison to the Asian and African countries. Then on the other side of news analysis is about why we are suffering from multiple cyclones is because the ocean temperature is higher or is hotter than it has been in the past couple of years. So which is the reason why this has happened. And then on the PNB fraud, Mehul Choksi, who is a, a comply in the PNB bank fraud case. What is the bank fraud? These people took loans and submitted collaterals which were fake. No such collateral actually existed on ground and have taken away the money and ran away. So Mehul Choksi, against whom the case has been pending by CBI, had issued or asked Interpol, which is the international police organization, to issue a red notice that all members of Interpol then have to arrest such a person against whom red notice, corner notice has been issued. However, Antigua, where he has been a citizen since 2017-18, had not affected the red notice. Now they have reported that he has probably escaped from Antigua. He is missing there and which would put efforts to bring him back to India even more difficult. Then another person in news related news is Colonel Punjab Singh. 1971 war veteran passed away because of COVID-19 related ailments. So he was the winner of the third highest wartime gallantry award that is the Veer Chakra in 1971 for his efforts in the 1971 war. 1971 war this year is the 50th anniversary of liberation of Bangladesh. Therefore individuals related to that become very important for you all. Then. This is something I discussed on the very front page, what the Supreme Court stated about. So this is the article on which I elaborated on the front page. Then on the right hand side is also uh, the third member of the panel that is Adhiranjan Chaudhary, who is the leader of opposition had pointed out a dissent has written down a dissent that see the government shortlisted candidates, 16 of them. 11 such candidates, their nomenclature was sent to the panel or their dossiers only two hours before the meeting. So when you are deciding upon which person should be made the CBI director, you have to go through a serious understanding of what these candidates are, what their purpose is, how they are. To understand this of 11 individuals and to make real-time remarks about their competency to do that within two hours is something he claimed is a sham. He had called for deferment of the meeting so that both N Justice N.V. Ramna and he himself could go through these candidates and then decide who they wanted to. But because uh, Justice N.V. Ramna stated that see a lot of time has been passed, the post has been vacant, let's decide on it today itself and they have now confirmed that Subodh Jaiswal will be the new CBI director. Then moving on, on the international news. So Moderna has claimed that its vaccine is highly effective or 100% effective in preventing symptomatic infections in children or children aged between 12 to 17. So their vaccine is an mRNA1273. That is the name of the vaccine is highly effective and is already being administered in population for the adults in America and now it has come out with details that see their vaccine is effective against children, effective against COVID-19 for children also. Then 
is further news that eu countries have shunned the belarusian airspace watch the may 25 episode where i have discussed why this has happened all right then moving on is news about blinken promises support for gaza and states that see we will not support hamas or try to do anything that supports hamas which is puts them from us is a firm ally of israel it's not going to do anything that against israel per se and eu leaders or european union has confirmed it is going to donate 100 billion doses of vaccines to the covax initiative which is part of procuring vaccines for poor countries who cannot afford it apart from this there is turmoil in mali that the military has taken over there but what is more important for us is the news that seven candidates have finally been shortlisted for presidential elections in iran so iran is a pseudo democracy in the sense that it is a supreme leader ayatollah khamenei since the islamic revolution took place in 1979 and there is a government which is pseudo elected that is people these candidates their approval comes from the supreme leader and then these candidates are there however moderate candidates that is candidates who are closer to the current president hasan rouhani have not been shortlisted so more details as it comes in about the candidates there and elections in iran becomes important not only because of the nuclear deal but also because iran is a close country to india so therefore situation there is part of our current affairs then moving on on the economic side sbi has claimed that our economy will contract by approximately 7.3% in the past one year which shows that see this is for the very first time since india's creation in 1947 that our economy is contracting then on the sporting side nothing of real note for us and on that note i'll conclude for the day in today's newspaper once again the two state solution and the one state solution what is the problem with the two state solution that editorial is very important for you all to read it gives you narrative about what is the perspective on the other side that is really important for you all to understand in case a application based question comes in clat examination apart from this news on the cyclone and the new cbi director becomes important so on that note i'll conclude for the day and i'll see you all tomorrow